Hey, it's world. I am back with another video. Today's topic is quite interesting and kind of sparked this idea. I don't think this is like a new topic or anything, but I figured it would be a good one to revisit as a lot of YouTubers and people are really talking about paring down their collection or they're looking to buy less this year. And of course, with all of the big luxury hiking up their prices to an obscene amount, if you really think about it. So it really kind of triggered me to think like, hey, if we are still wanting to buy from these big luxury brands, should we buy them vintage or should we buy them in the newer version and perhaps less than you know, retail or perhaps in the pre-love market, right? As we all know, the big luxury brands like Louis Vuitton, Gucci, Prada, et cetera, et cetera, they like to go into their archives, meaning just revamp and really just take an old design and revamping it with like minor tweaks to it, if at all. So I've picked out 10 different bags that I thought were pretty classic and they're always vintage versions or they have continuously made this particular model from each of these major luxury brands and see kind of walk through my process, thought process, as well as my opinion. Again, this entire video is my opinion. Feel free to disagree with it or not. But if you should purchase the older version or a pre-love version or the newer version, a pre-love version kind of thing, right? So let's just get right into it. So I'm gonna break it down in two different sections. The first part of this, the first five bags I'm gonna cover, in my opinion, I think you should buy vintage. So the first bag I want to cover is going to be the Ferragamo Iconic Bag. I've talked about this bag multiple times and I did feature this in a recent video where it is my, one of my top 10 underrated bags. Ferragamo in general I feel like is very underrated and, but from what I hear from social media Ferragamo is like a hot new brand this year so something to keep a lookout for but this particular bag was I think created back in the 90s, right? They made it all the way up to the year early 2000s and they stopped producing this particular bag. Then they brought it back again. If you take a look at the new versions, there's not a whole lot of difference. There's a little bit of a shape difference, but overall the silhouette is pretty much the same. And guess what? They are retailing for $3,000 for a medium size. And I'll make sure to you know post pictures of any bags I don't have, $3,000. This one I got from the pre-love market for under $500. Now, obviously, when you're looking in the pre-love market, you always have to, you know, go on the hunt. It's not like an instant gratification. You can just order off of, you know, the website. If you get lucky, and you maybe you can, but you want to make sure you find it in a condition that you are comfortable with, in a price range, in a color combination that you like, et cetera, et cetera, right? And there's always a risk in buying in the pre-love market so something to always consider, but in my opinion, I think it is completely worth it for you to purchase this vintage slash pre-loved. And I'll make sure to link all of the purses I'm talking about down below in the show notes for you. And obviously I know everybody loves buying from Fashion File just because they are a reliable source. So if I can find it on Fashion File, I'll make sure to link it down for you below. But if I can't find it on Fashion File, I'll try to find other, other links for you as well. The second bag I no longer own is going to be the Lady Dior. So again, I made a video about my Lady Dior. I love the bag. Honestly, if I were to do it all over again, I would still probably purchase the Lady Dior. I don't think I'll add one to my collection in the future. Never say never, but if, as of right now, as of today, <laughs> I will not be adding a Lady Dior to my collection. But if I were to, I definitely would go pre-love just because, or the vintage version of it, just because of the drastic price difference. Other than the opening, which kind of like I'm contradicting myself, but if it makes sense, <laughs> when the dollar amount that big of a difference, I will, I will suck it up and deal with the opening of the vintage pieces. My biggest pet peeve was the opening, right? Where it was a zipper, it was impossible to, that wasn't impossible, it was just a hassle to get in and out of the bag. Whereas the new one it does have the APC flap, but I hear from other people who own that also said that's a pain in the ass to use as well. So, you know, looking at the Lady Dior, if you're looking like a, I think a medium size, they're $6,500, which is just an obscene amount of money for a Lady Dior compared to what we know the prices used to be. And then if you look at the pre-love market, they're about $2,500, anywhere from like $1,500 to like $2,500, $2,800. That is a huge chunk of change difference just for the difference in the opening. But other than that, the whole entire bag itself, the silhouette is pretty much the same. So I think 
in my opinion, that you should still go to vintage route and try to find one. And of course, Lady Dior, Dior's, they don't hold their value, right? So you probably want to take a look at Fashion File or other places and see if you can find a vintage, vintage ones and save yourself a buck or two or thousands, <laughs> however you want to look at it. All right, so the third bag I want to go over is going to be the Jackie, the Gucci Jackie. So I was doing some research on this. The Gucci Jackie, it's been around forever, and I don't think they ever stop making it. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm not as well versed in Gucci as other brands, but the Gucci Jackie is an iconic bag for Gucci, right? So there are a lot of them out there. And I was doing, again, some research on this for you guys. The Gucci Jackie can range depending on the silhouette, but like if you look at this particular one, it's six, it's four hundred sixty-five dollars, and then you compare it to the brand new one, it's twenty-five fifty. If you look at the silhouette, not a huge difference in my opinion. So if I can sp save, let's just say, two thousand dollars, why not go with the vintage one? The fourth bag I do want to cover is going to be Bottega. So I used to have the Bottega. Uh, I think they called it the Encarterito. <laughs> I can't pronounce anything. So the old, basically, Jody is like the new version of it, right? So you can find Bottega bags, the hobo bag with like the weird enclosure. I got rid of that because that annoyed me. So I would never, ever buy the Jody bag. That one, I can rate, I, again, the, the prices are kind of all over the place. It's not very consistent like Chanel's or Hermes or whatever. But when it comes to Bottega, they also don't hold their value, right? But I've seen anywhere from ranging from like $1,500 or $800 all the way up to like $2,800, $2,900, depending on the condition. Bottega's wear and tear can very drastically change, <laughs> apparently, um, just because of how the leather is constructed. So for the Jody Small, it is at $4,100. That's a lot of money. And then for them to revamp that bag and just put a knot on the handle, I don't think it's worth paying an extra $2,000 or, you know, $1,000, $1,500, whatever it is, for you to just have that knot difference. So again, in my opinion, I would say definitely go with the older version if you can find one at a decent, decent price as well as decent condition. All right, so the last bag, which I, in my opinion, that I think you should be purchasing vintage is going to be Chanel. I'm not going to beat a dead horse here because everybody's talking about how crazy the Chanel bags in terms of the poor quality, the quality control is not there, and then them hiking the prices up to over five digits. I mean, that's crazy, right? So let me show you the two that I have. This is the newer version in the medium double flat. And I also have the vintage version in the jumbo with a 24 karat gold. So this one I purchased in 2021 for about $7,000 in Europe. It was my first, I think, was it my first Chanel? I think it was my first Chanel bag. So obviously, you know, me thinking that I was like, oh, I'm going to buy a Chanel bag. I should do it in store because it's my first Chanel, right? I'm never going to sell this bag. Do I regret it? Sometimes I do. But if I knew a little bit better, I would have gone vintage. Because $7,000 is a lot of money. And if you look at the pre-love market, like Fashion File, again, I'm using them as a frame of reference, not that their, their prices are the best or the worst, but you know that they're reliable, right? So the medium double flap, the lowest I could find is about 4,500, I wanna say. So $7,000 or $4,500. That's thousands of dollars. And of course, Fashion File has like 10% off coupons every now and then. So you can definitely save a little bit more than 4,500 or, you know, maybe drop it down to like $3,800, right? Don't quote my math. <laughs> but I purchased this one off of the vintage market. Honestly, if you ask me again, would I ever get the double flap? Probably not. I actually like the single flap a little bit better. So this one is in the, the jumbo and it came with all of its authentication card. And of course, like the 24 karat gold hardware, everything. It is just a really well constructed bag. Now, if you look at, you know, fashion file at the maxis, they range about they range between forty two hundred and seven thousand dollars. So if I were to purchase this one, which this one I got for about three or four thousand dollars off of the Japanese vintage market. This one, 
it just looks much more luxurious. Sure, I wish it was caviar leather, so you can't really compare the two, but I think this one just looks really high quality and the gold just sparkles in a very different way compared to this one, right? You can see the gold. This one is just not because it's larger, but because of the 24 karat gold. Me going around in circles, basically what I'm saying, if you are looking to purchase a Chanel, go vintage, go pre-loved, get something that is actually quality or instead of you know buying something that could be a little bit janky in terms of quality control. Oh, I also was looking up the prices, right? So apparently they decided to charge the same price of $11,000 for the medium as well as the large, which I'm thinking the large is like the same thing as the jumbo. Then they also have the maxi. They charge $11,500. I guess they didn't decide to round it up to like $12,000 or, or, you know, <laughs> just because of the larger bag. We're going to be generous with you. Chanel's being generous with you by only adding $500 more to the larger, the maxi bag. <laughs> All right, before I get into the second portion of the video, do hit that like and subscribe button for me if you haven't done so already. Again, I am so appreciative. All 2,000-ish people of you have subscribed and helped me build my channel. Again, I want to build this channel based on my true, honest opinion, whether you agree with it or not. But I try to look at everything objectively as opposed to subjectively. And of course, I don't like to sugarcoat things. If you haven't figured it out by now, I'm a very blunt, straightforward person. If I like something, I'm gonna tell you I love it. If I don't like something, I will also let you know that I do not like it, right? So most of you probably have found me based on um, the luxury alternatives, like the mid-range indie brands bags that I've covered. So if you haven't seen those videos, definitely go check them out. I do cover the big luxury from time to time. I start, that's where I started, but I think it's still worthy to look at, but I am in the mindset of shifting more to pre-love as well as indie brands, just because I feel like indie brands are not as well known and they deserve all the love. And, and that includes jewelry brands and includes, you know, purses, shoes, whatever it is. If there are indie brands that are out there that I think deserves my attention because of their quality and their ethos and their philosophy, blah, blah, blah then I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to try it out. I'm going to test it out using my own money. Or if they send the bag to me, I'm going to give you my honest opinion. So I do hope you'll come back and subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell if you haven't done so already so that you don't miss any of my brutally honest opinion on anything I show you. All right. So the second section here is going to be, in my opinion, you should buy the new version. So the first one is going to be the Fendi baguette. Obviously, I bought one myself, right? <laughs> so the Fendi baguette has been around for, I think, over 25 years. They just did their anniversary um, celebration and they released like 50 different versions of it. So the Fendi baguette, obviously, if you look at the vintage versions of it, most of them are going to be in the Zuka print, right? And usually it's black, you know, it could come in various colors, but their tr most traditional color is going to be the brown one, right? To me, that feels a little boring. So if you want to purchase that at a lower dollar amount, I mean, I get it, go for it. But in my opinion, because they did release the new version, which is what you're seeing here, and they did enough of updates to the bag to make me want to buy the new one instead, even though it costs a thousand, fifteen hundred dollars more. They started being really creative and playing around with the different hardware, the old ones and vintage ones, the older version. It was just gold or silver hardware. Sometimes you see a little bit of variation, but mostly what you see on the pre-love market, the vintage market, very straightforward. Not a whole lot of creativity with it, right? And it's the same thing with this new one. They came out with a lot of different variations with the leather version, um, the two D rings that are allowing you to not just use it as a shoulder bag or crook of your arm bag. You can put straps on it that is designed for the bag itself. And then the silhouette just looks very modern in my opinion. I got this one in the fabric, fabric version. I wish I got it in the leather version because I actually really like the embossed Zuka print as opposed to actually the you know traditional quote unquote more traditional prints i still really like this bag but i wish i got it in the leather version just because i like leather bags a lot more than i do 
fabric bags in general. And the brand new cost of a Fendi, I think in leather, is about $3,700. Fashion File has it for about $2,400. So instead of purchasing it brand new in the boutique, if you're gonna go with the newer version, I would still look at pre-loved as opposed to brand new, just because there are an abundance of these out there. So I think that you can, if you can save $1,000 or a little over $1,000, why wouldn't you? So the next bag I do not own in my collection uh, is going to be the Prada shoulder bag. And I think they call this the re-edition. I know that was like the craze for the past maybe two or three years. Honestly, I don't understand it. And I've poo-pooed the Prada nylon bags in general. But I do want to talk about this because it is a really popular bag. And honestly, in my opinion, when I'm looking at the vintage versions versus the brand new versions, I think go with the brand new because this one, I think the brand new cost $19.50. Whereas the old ones, the old silhouette of the shoulder bag, the nylon shoulder bag, is about $560, right? If you look at the older ones, they just look dingy. And this is another knock on why I don't like nylon. Just because they don't age as well, right? Even though if the bag has been taken care of, it still looks really dingy and grimy after. Yes, it's supposed to be waterproof. It's supposed to be, but the oils on your fingers with using a Prada nylon bag, it just looks really grimy after 10 years, 20 years. And the, the shape of it just, I don't know, again, I just don't like nylon bags and luxury especially. So if you must get the re-edition bag, get the new one because the, the, the silhouette just looks a little bit more modern than the old one. The old one just looks frumpy and kind of crushed. So I just, I just don't like it. I don't have a whole lot to say about that. I just stay away from the Prada nylon, period. All right, so the next one is going to be the Celine Triumph. Personally, I do not have the Celine Triumph, uh, you know, anything of uh, their bags. But if you know, the Triumph logo was a revamped um version of the vintage one where it's like the horse and carriage and the triumph logo right of the arc and everything they took inspiration and then took that and ran with it everything is triumph logoed which honestly i do like the triumph logo but i feel like i'm not adding that to my collection because one i feel like it could be overdone really quickly and two most of the silhouettes that they have come out with aren't that different from Phoebe Philo days. Yes, they are more minimal. They're all very quiet luxury, so to speak, with exception of that gold logo. But if you are liking, if you had to pick between the vintage version versus the new version, I would go with the new version all day, every day, just because it's much brighter, it's gold hardware, it seems much more clean. Whereas the Triumph from the vintage days, they're all kind of embossed into a leather piece that is the logo for the bag and most of them if you look at them are pretty beat up and it just looks vintage right there's a big difference between the old one and the new one it's not like the Prada, Prada nylon or perhaps like the Gucci Jackie right there's not a whole lot of difference in this case there is a whole lot of difference so I will give Celine kudos for actually taking stuff from the archives and revamping it so that it looks very modern instead of just being lazy so to speak and just like slap it on the logo or just redo the bag except you know with a different print or color or whatever this actually is a good revamp of something from their archives in my opinion so i would definitely go you know with the newer version of the triumph but see if you can buy pre-love if you can save 800 bucks or you know a thousand dollars do it don't buy retail all right so the next one i were going to cover is going to be the loewe flamenco Super cute bag. I've touched one before and Loewe's leather is just next level. Super underrated. I have seen a lot of vintage Loewe bags and they're kind of ugly. I'm sorry, <laughs> but they're all kind of ugly. They're just very plain, which I get the whole, you know, let's be minimalist. Let's be quite luxury. Like, you know, maybe we should look at the vintage, but they're old bags. They're old designs. They're just, they're just terrible. They're just awful, right? And the flamenco bag is not new. The old version comes with a tassel and it just looks frumpy. I know I use that word for, for Prada, but the old flamenco bag, just it looks like a knapsack, a, nap, a leather knapsack. <laughs> it did not age well. Maybe it's just because of the way it's like a drawstring bag 
and that's why it didn't age well. So in my opinion, if you look at the new flamenco bags, the the lines are very nice, very clean, very clear cut. The little logo on the side just like embossed into the leather. Chef's kiss. I really like it a lot. So again, they aren't horribly priced. It's not like Chanel prices where it's like $10,000. They're priced at $2,600. And for the quality of Loewe's leather, I think it's worth it. So if you want to purchase this retail, I'm 100% 10 out of 10 would support your decision. But if you want to buy a pre-loved, just be aware. Take a look at how the, weather, the, the leather has worn, how people have taken care of it. Because the leather is very soft and very malleable, it's easily abused if not taken care of correctly. So if you're going to buy pre-loved, just be very aware of the pictures. And I really like to remind you, if you do buy pre-loved, like Fashion File, always check their return policy. If it shows up in your hands, not what you expected, make sure you can return it. All right, so let's wrap this up. I think this video is way longer than I intended. Apparently, I have a lot to say about these bags. Um, so the last one I want to cover is going to be the LV favorite. So this is another bag that they had for a long time, and it was super popular. And then they revamped, revamped it recently. So I did let go of my own LV favorite not too long ago to one of my subscribers. Um, and she loved it, which I'm so glad it went to a new home. The canvas Damier, I just never used that. I might have used that bag once, maybe twice. And it was just not, I mean, the silhouette, completely fine. It's just a very simple flat bag with a chain strap and a, and a leather strap. You would think that it's a no-brainer, right? So the one that they revamped is going to be in Empreinte leather. And honestly, I actually like LV's Empreinte leather way better than the monogram. So... This got released not too long ago, and I did check it out in store, and I was like, ooh, this is kind of cute. Pains me to want to buy this um, retail price, but, you know, I'm going to avoid it. <laughs> Try not to look at it, but it is kind of cute. And I do like the design of it because it is completely different from the monogram portion of it, like the, the canvas and everything, and it just looks a little bit more puffier. So the design and the way they, re you know, Louis Vuitton has a tendency of revamping bags. They're very guilty of discontinuing bag and then made a little change to it and then jacking up the prices. We all talked about this. So I'm not going to beat a dead horse here, but the favorite, I will give them credit. They did do a much more, they, they made more effort in changing the favorite to look very modern, very puffy. It's a little bit wider and the design looks a little bit different. So in my opinion, if you're going to go for the LV favorite, go for a new one. Now, I looked around the vintage markets or the pre love markets, excuse me. There's not a whole lot of them out there and the prices are still pretty high. As much as it pains me to, to say this, go buy it retail. If you're only if they're if you're only saving 2-300 off of the retail price, go buy it retail. Go buy it at the store, go buy it at the boutique so that you get a fresh new one, you get I don't think you get warranty, but you do get a better customer service experience than buying it pre-loved and you get the whole full set, dust bag, box, et cetera, et cetera, and the receipt. So that kind of wraps it up in terms of my video, but I do have one bonus category, right? You think I wasn't going to cover Hermes? Of course I'm going to cover Hermes. So when it comes to Hermes, my opinion is going to be either buy brand new or if you get a, if you can get a hand, your hands on a Birkin or a Kelly Hermes brand new, then you know kudos to you. You probably spent like fifty grand before they offered it to you. So if you had a choice to buy brand new, obviously I would say one hundred percent go for brand new. Now if you don't want to go play that Hermes game, I hundred percent support buying a Birkin or a Kelly in the pre love market. So I'm just gonna throw that out there. I've talked about Birkins and Kellys enough. So you know where I stand on that. I would 100% drop money like that if uh, I was offered one at the boutique, but I would also check out the vintage market as well. So that one is definitely a split between the two. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. Again, do come back and check out some of my other videos and hear me, you know, basically yap about my opinions. You can agree with it. Comment down below. What are your thoughts on the 10 bags that I covered? Would you buy them vintage or the older version? Or would you buy the brand, the newer version, hopefully pre-love, but would you buy them from the boutique? Let me know your thoughts. Let's have a discussion about it. Or am I just crazy for even going back deep into any of these bags and just like go around in circles in my head? 
life is hard. I want to help you save time and money so that you can somehow adult easier and hopefully less than retail. I'll see you all next time.